I am just worthless at engineering. There's got to be a better way of doing this. <gasps> I have an idea. Step one to summon a demon. Adon a black hooded cloak. Check. Step two. Arrange five candles in a shape that can be joined by five points of a five-pointed star. I can do that. I hope the demons are okay with electronic candles. Uh, it's very dry and very windy. So the candles would be blown out or start another fire. Okay, step three. Now pour salt in a circle and then within the circle make an outline of a pentagram where the points meet at each black candle. Okay. Oh. 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 Oh, man. Should I really be pouring salt onto the ground? I feel like that would have some sort of adverse effects. Are these demons concerned about the environment? What would this do to my beautiful grass? Wonder if there's a way to find out. Hey there, YouTubers! Well, that was one heck of a cold opening. I've done many a cold openings in my day, but that one, that one really pushes an envelope that I don't know if I'm comfortable with. Nevertheless, though, salt in the earth. How much salt does it take to actually kill a plant? That's the question we're going to somewhat answer today. Uh, so I took to Google, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to take very much salt. Like, we're talking just a few sprinkles of it should kill the plant, which is kind of insane that it does, like, a few grams, they said, kills large weeds, so I think our, uh, monocot and dicots here are, we're not going to stand much of a chance, so I need to kind of figure out, uh, how we're going to do this, how much salt we're going to distribute between each one of these. Now I was gonna go grab a thing of dirt, try and figure out some sort of thing to hold all these different plants. And then I was at Menards, went to the garden center, I found this, it comes pre-filled with dirt. How about that, right? Pre-filled with dirt. And it's got a lot of them. They're not very big because we're really, we're just needing to see how much. So, uh, how many of these things we got working on here? So, 9 times 4 is 36. Okay, so we have 36 of these bad boys. So we'll do corn, beans, and then so we'll do control, and then increasing increments of salt. Or we'll do the control down here since there seems to be more dirt up here. So we'll do the control. I'll have to add some dirt though. Uh, this one here seems to be out. That's fine. Uh, I have, I think I have dirt somewhere in this house. Or we'll just redistribute it across. Make sure it's all equal. And then we'll water it. Uh, so let's, let's start the distribution process. Okay, so I was examining the thing. I've got the dirt somewhat leveled out. And I thinking about how much salt we're gonna put on. I think what the plan is to do 
the control here, so we'll have control row here, eighth of a gram, quarter, half, three quarters, and then a full gram down here. And the reason why I'm doing less of this big one is because I have no hopes for that working. Honestly, I really feel like once we get past three quarters of a gram, it's going, these things aren't going to, I feel like once we get past a half a gram, they're not going to take off. I, you know, quarter gram feels like a lot of salt, especially, if, like I said, one or two grams is enough to kill a large weed. These aren't even sprouted, so we'll see. We will see. But that's the method for the madness. I got to get my scale. I bought a new one because, uh, how do I put this? Putting aluminum powder in a cup on a windy day causes it to get inside your scale. And aluminum powder is conductive, and so my scale doesn't work. We'll test it, we'll see. If it still doesn't work, then uh, i have just used a new one and we'll throw the old one away. <sighs> I've only used it like a handful of times. That's the sad part. But what are you gonna do? Price to pay when you make thermite. Let's actually get things planted and uh, we'll go from there. Now maybe I should give some explanation behind the rationale between monocot, the sweet corn, and this dicot, the beans. So in the plant kingdom, phylum, whatever, in the plant classifications, you have monocots and dicots. Really big difference is kind of how they sprout. Uh, and, I mean, and uh, among other things, <laughs> there's a lot of differences between them. But two of the big things we're going to focus on here is the dicots bring up the whole... So basically, a dicot, the beans, when they sprout, they create a root. The root takes hold, and then as the stem grows, it pulls the entire seed up out of the ground, opening up and revealing the seed leaves. And it'll it's usually about two seed leaves. And then you'll get broad leaves with uh, spider veins in them. The veins will have, this will be a central vein and then they'll spread out kind of in a fractal pattern. Corn, uh, monocot, it will make a root and then it'll make a stem, leaving the seed in the ground. And the stem will poke up and you'll get a seed leaf that'll come out. And then corn has an interesting thing, <laughs> the way it grows, but they're not gonna get that far before I terminate the experiment. Corn leaf, uh, what's different between it and monocot, I'll have a picture showing up. Corn leaf has parallel or nearly parallel veins that run down it. That they're not, they don't come out of a central vein and spider out They're They're just straight lines, very different structure. Corn is a is a grass as you, a fun fact. And these are just, well, these are a legume, they're a bean. So anyways, we're going to label these things because well, label-ish, I should say. So one toothpick is corn, and these will be marking the controls. Two toothpicks signifying dicot will be signifying the bean controls. And then obviously just on video, I will be saying eighth, quarter, half, three quarter, and then a full gram. Now here's the other thing, right? So I have to water this, right? And as the water runs through the soil, it'll dissolve the salt and take some of it with it. So there is a possibility that the gram or that the smaller ones, the water might drain out completely taking the, the salt with it, preventing uh, the, the, from it hurting the bean or the corn. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's just, just an idea. I think hopefully the eighth of the gram will come up. Maybe the quarter, I don't think we'll have anything over here. But we'll see, kind of depends on how much the water is able to take away. A gram is a lot of salt for a little plant. That's, at least that's what the internet suggests, so. Oh crap, this thing can't do an eighth of a gram. I just realized that. Shoot. Well, we'll figure it out.
I don't know how I'm going to measure half an eighth of a gram. I have an idea. We'll do it volumetrically. So I'm going to measure out what a full gram is. Done. Well, so much for trying to do that in any scientific manner at all. Uh, but there we go. I'll give them all some water and uh, well, wait, I don't know if I'll do a time lapse. I would like to do a time lapse of some sort, but that's kind of unnecessary. That's kind of difficult to do and almost unnecessary. So I'll put these on my <laughs> coffee table and I'll see you guys in, what's the sprout time on these things? Seven to 14 days. So the water is having a difficult time permeating through this soil that I got. Uh, and so the soil that it came with anyway, it's like normal potting soil, it doesn't usually have an issue, but this stuff, it won't permeate through the soil. I don't know why. Who makes a soil that doesn't permeate water? That's like one of the crucial functions of water. It's why plants grow. How am I supposed to get the seeds to sprout? The water won't soak through. This is the next day, too. I even went and like poked toothpicks. Well, I keep wanting to say something else. Toothpicks through things, and it didn't work. This is stupid. Also, you can see the salt, I think, grew some crystals in some of these. Interesting. Interesting. I screwed up. I messed up. This, this didn't work. We, nothing grew. Nothing grew. Now, I'm not saying that my methodology was wrong. No. My theory is that this dirt that they provide was the cheapest dirt money could buy. And the water would sit on top of it. It wouldn't soak through. So we're going to redo this experiment. It's actually best that it happened this way because, well, now there's more stuff I can add to the runtime because it was going to be, here's the methodology, here's this, here's the end product. Now we can do more things. So I'm going to dump this out, clean it out, I've got new, better dirt, premium. Premium dirt that's now all over the place. And uh, we're going to give this a whirl. We're going to fill this up with the new, better soil. Something I want to go over is my new methodology. So before, I originally. You know, I was going to measure everything out by mass, but then I realized my scale is nowhere near sensitive enough to do what I was wanting to do. And I've had a lot of time to think about it since then, i.e. I thought about this today and came up with a solution today, in which that is dissolving the... Basically, we're going to use solutions of water. Basically, we're going to just make a basic solution of water, and then to get the amount of salt we want, we're going to just add more water to that base level solution to get the concentration that we want, add that to each and every single one of these, and go from there. I'm going to start the process of putting dirt, and then we will do the math later in the night. I had to break out the, the, the glassware. I had to find a use for it at some point, right? I spent all the money on it and never used it. Alrighty. So once again, <laughs> it is refilled. <laughs> I have marked dicots and monocots because that was the comparison. It's the same seeds, which maybe in hindsight that's a bad idea. But the plan is push in each one, and then we're gonna add the water. Ch I changed the methodology for the water again. I had to think about it a lot longer. Uh, 
15 mils of water, I think will be sufficient. But that's gonna be 15 mils of water with the salt added, which is gonna make some math difficulties. But that's okay, I will figure that out. In the meantime, I need to press a bunch of beans into holes. We have the control, one gram and 15 mils of water. These each got 15 mils. They will all just get you know the necessary amount of water they need to stay hydrated. But for this first time through, 15 mils of water, one gram, 15 mils of water, three quarters of a gram, 15 mils of water, half a gram, 15 mils of water, one quarter of a gram, and 15 mils of water, one eighth of a gram. Now we just wait. One theory that isn't just because the other soil was crap is that the, the tray in the bottom was collecting the water I was pouring. So as I poured it, I don't think it happened, but it's possible that that was leaching up into the bottom of the cups and then thus into the soil and making its way into the control and through all of them and killing everything. I don't know if that's true. I have no easy way to prove that, but it's a theory. So we'll see you whenever things start to sprout. Alrighty, it has been a time. I don't know how long, but it's been quite some time. So we've got our plants here. So remember, this was the control. This was one gram, three quarters, half, quarter, eighth. So as we see, all the controls came up. All right, so here in the control, this corn plant is just junk. I don't know what its problem is. It's brown, it's dying, whatever. I, I, who knows, probably just watered it too much. This corn plant, eh, it's a little curved. I mean, it's October I'm doing this, so the sunlight isn't great. And then we have the beans, and these beans are huge. Look at this. They're beautiful. I, I, almost, I almost feel bad for having to, I'm gonna have to kill them. Maybe I'll buy a pot today, I don't know. So then, Obviously nothing in the gram and three quarters, but in the half we had one corn plant. This did look better at one point, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. And as we move further down, nothing in the quarter except for once again, one random corn plant. So it seems to me the corn likes the salt a little bit better than the other ones. Hard to say, uh, but this one's still really sickly. And then we get down into the eighth of a gram and well, they're all sickly. So there's three corn plants came up and one bean. This bean was looking nice. It took forever to grow, uh, but then I went for vacation. I watered everything before I left, but yeah, not looking too great. So what does this mean here? Well, maybe the corn likes the salt a bit better, but also I should have done this in a nicer part of the year. Uh, anyways, so, should you salt your earth? No, don't. Uh, obviously, you need quite a bit to kill a plant, it seems, or at least prevent it from growing, uh, depending on the plant. Obviously, it looks like the dicots are much more uh, uh, prone to the salt than the monocots, but the mono but once again, none of these monocots look very healthy, so take that as you will. I don't know, this is a stupid video. Anyways, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. New videos at the end of every month, or whenever I feel like it. Uh, and check out the blog posts. I, I, may, I started doing that in October. Uh, this video is going up sometime this winter, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, well, good night. Subs for trees. Subs for trees. Subs for trees. Trees, subs for tre Oh, you're still here? I thought I told you to go home. Oh, you want more? I'm flattered. Check out the playlist.
If you want exclusive content, check out my Instagram, doctor underscore sheep underscore YouTube. That's all lowercase. If you want to help the earth, subscribe. When I reach 100 subscribers, I'm going to plant 10 trees. If you feel that's too small, then check out my channel tour where I lay out even bigger goals. Finally, stick around for the next 20 seconds to give me that sweet watch time. Bye.